Welcome to Left in the Hip. I'm spiritual hypnotherapist, master esthetician, and your host, Sakura Sutter. And I want to just give a quick shout out to my parents. Happy anniversary. And I'll let you know that this show was created with the intention of helping others to help and love themselves. Aside from weekly skin tips, you will hear me feature amazing souls from around the world who are making a difference by helping others in their own way. You may also hear me follow up with a guest I've hypnotized in an online edition of Love from the Hip, which is available on YouTube. Together, we can all make a difference, and it begins with love, love from the hip. The Popol Vuh translates to the Book of Community or the Book of the People and is the sacred text of the Quiche Maya. The Popol Vuh is a collection of narratives containing myths and historical facts of the Mayans and is based on the manuscript of Dominican priest Francisco Jimenez. During the invasion of the Spanish in the 18th century, most of their writings were destroyed, making Popol Vuh a valuable piece of work. And because the word myth does not exist in Mayan, Popol Vuh is considered their history. In Popol Vuh, the creation myth plays a prominent role. It is said in the beginning there was dark sky and an endless silent sea and two gods, Tepeyu the maker and Gukumats the feathered serpent. By speaking their thoughts, everything came to be. They thought earth, trees, valleys, mountains, and then living creatures. The gods wanted to be worshipped and invoked and invoked these creatures, but they couldn't, they were unable to talk. So they then created humans. The first human creation was made from mud and earth, but their bodies dissolved. For the next creation, they added wood. But these humans had no soul, no heart, and no mind, and could not worship the gods. So as a consequence, the gods destroyed them with a flood. The few that escaped the trees became monkeys and were left by the gods to be examples to the next race of men. The final creation of humans was possible with the help of the hero twins who helped to plant the corn from which was mixed with water to make human flesh. Four men were created from the maize. These humans were alarmingly perfect, almost too perfect. When the gods asked these men what they could see, these men replied that they could see above and beyond. The gods worried that these men would supersede them in their ability and decided to put a fog on their eyes so they could only see what was close to them. And so their great understanding of the world was weakened. The gods gave them morality to keep them loyal and four wives to keep them content. These eight became known as the ancestors of the Quiche men and women of today. And the white and yellow maize continues to connect the people to their ancestors as well as feed their bodies and spirits. The Popo Vu provides just one example of a creation myth. Creation myths are a symbolic narrative of the beginning of the world which all cultures have. In metaphorical terms, creation myths provide us with a sense of who we are in context to the world. Most creation myths, like that of the Mayans, tend to describe creation which happens out of nothing, void, and absence. This is called ex nihilo, which translates to out of nothing in Latin, and it can be applied to the ancient Egyptians, Genesis in the Bible, and even the Big Bang Theory. Why is it so difficult to grasp the concept that something can be created from nothing? Maybe because we typically associate nothingness with emptiness. Even though there may be no heat, no cold, and no atoms of any sort, there is still energy, called quantum energy. Quantum physicists will argue that quantum energy can indeed exist in physical form, but does it because the positive energy is perfectly counterbalanced by the negative. We don't have an exact word to describe this, and although there is something, we still use the word nothing. But where did quantum energy come from? One theory is that it has always just existed and will continue to exist, a true concept of infinity, or that it was created by God, source, spirit, an infinite being, whatever you want to call it. As Stephen Hawking said, if we do discover the theory of everything, it would be the ultimate triumph of human reason. For then, we would truly know the mind of God. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing author, inspirational speaker, shaman, Mayan cosmologist, and founder of the genius process, Adam Hall. He will not only share his journey, ancient wisdom teachings, but also later on the show, we will open up the phone line so he can give you a free Mayan cosmology reading. So stick around after this quick break. 
Your skin is your body's largest organ. Care for it properly, starting with your face. Sakura Skin and Mind offers several clinical facial treatments to help stimulate collagen production, eliminate toxins, boost circulation, and deeply cleanse. See a new you in your mirror. Clinical facials range from $90 and up. Do your face a favor. Sakura Skin and Mind, erasing wrinkles one clinical facial at a time. Learn more, sakuraskinandmind.com. S A K U R A skinandmind.com. Alternative Talk 1150, online at 1150kknw.com. Welcome back to Love from the Hip. I'm spiritual hypnotherapist, master esthetician, and your host, Sakura Sutter. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Facebook and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Love from the Hip, and that's H Y P. Today, I have the pleasure of having author, inspirational speaker, shaman, Mayan cosmologist, and founder of the Genius Process, Adam Hall. Hey, Adam, thanks for being here today. Hey, Sakura, great to be here with you and great to be here with your audience. And uh, love your love your intro to cosmology and the Mayan cosmology in particular. So looks like we're going to have some fun today exploring what that means to, to each of us. Yeah. So can you tell me what a Mayan cosmologist is, though? Well, you know, you reference very clearly that the co- cosmology of the cosmos is, is a source of origin. It's a, a story of, of creation, whatever your worldview might be. And the Mayans, uh, in particular, uh, uh, adopted and lived by and created culture by and in, in vi- really, really architected their entire life and civilization based on a co- cosmology of a greater interconnectivity and they told and expressed this through story and also through their teachings for example the mayan cosmology would speak into say a young person and it would it would hold them and train them and support them in their particular cosmology that supported their greater journey their greater destiny Mm. And verse being kind of more today, we kind of get go into our schools and we go into our ter- churches and we live according to the values of our society in particular. But the Mayans were more focused on the, the greater cosmology, the greater interconnectivity of, of, of ourselves and the universe and the wisdom and the knowledge that came from that. So the Mayan cosmologists were unique in this expression in that they lived by this. They didn't see the separation that we do in, in more modern cultures and more modern cos- cosmological stories. So Maya cosmology is a place to have fun and explore because it offers us deep insights into who we are and where we're going in okay. our lives. So would you say then cosmology is a role that we play where we fit in the world? You know, I, 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 I would say yes and. So yes, most certainly the cosmology of, of the Mayans expression reflects our personality, our outward expression in the world. But the and is, it's also the connection, the bridge to more of our true selves in our spiritual selves. Mm. So that, which, which is really in, in its own purest state of expression. And I'm sure we'll dive a little more deeply into that. Because it's more not a function of where do I belong and that's in the world, at least according to Mayan cosmology, it's more how can I express my gifts and my genius in the world and knowing what those gifts and geniuses, what it really is. Okay. So that's, 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 a, that's a big yes and. Okay. All right. So does Mayan cosmology use symbols and archetypes? Oh, very much so. And uh, let me, I'd like to lean into this for a moment, Sakura, because it's a great question. Because much of our study and our traditions for all of us that are wanting to do research and to become more evolved humans, which uh, I believe most of us want to do that, not all of us, but some of us are very intent on that. And and, and often we do that through more of a typical left-brain rational reasoning, analytical approach, lots of study in that context. Mm-hmm. What the, 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 the mystery of the Mayan have done and others, be it the, the Tao or the I Ching or 
uh, even the human design or other sources of kind of divination of looking more deeply into into ourselves, what it does is it uses archetypes, as you, you mentioned, and symbols. And this, what this does is it allows us uniquely to take a, a look at a different perspective of our lives other than just kind of in a box. In other words, if we're in the box of our thinking, we sometimes we can't see. It's like being in the weeds. We can't really see beyond them. But the idea of an archetype, say like of an eagle, as our, our other animal totems, or even a symbol like a square or a circle, those allow us to use more right brain uh, skill sets that allow us to have more imagination and wonder mm -hmm. as to what our life is and what it could be. Okay. So hopefully that's helpful. Yeah, so it connects us more to our conscious selves. For sure, no doubt about that. It, it, it connects us right into the, not only the conscious self, but it really connects us into the unconscious self. Okay. And as 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 Jung, Jungian psychologists would say, it's that's where the gold is for ourselves is to be able to access the parts of our lives that we don't necessarily see, or it's not necessarily part of our five sensory perception. It's within our own unconscious self, and to allow those treasures to come forth and to express themselves either through healing, like the great work you do, or through creation, mm. so to be a co-creator with the universe. And the Mayans were masters at this, and that's why they had a culture designed this way. Okay. So how many, roughly, how many symbols and archetypes are there? Unlimited. Unlimited. Okay. Unlimited. They're infinite. And, they, and this speaks into the true nature of reality. Mm -hmm. That everything within the universe as we know it is 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 alive and interconnected with ourselves and within a whole a more a holistic system, and it reflects the holographic nature. So therefore, everything, in particular the shamanic and indigenous cultures, you know, they the mountains were alive, the stones, the trees, the forest, the you know, the lizards, the the spiders, all mm -hmm. of it very alive and enriched with deep wisdom and knowledge about what is transcendent and what we think we know as human beings. So very powerful to tap into archetypes and symbols of the sorts and their unlimited availability and they're very accessible to us all. Okay, so yeah. why would anyone want to know their Mayan cosmology? If you have a curiosity about your own personal evolution, uh, if you are interested in freeing yourself of what no longer serves you, i.e. past, which dic offers really often dictates, I think you may know what I mean, our thoughts, mm -hmm. our actions. We seemingly are living in the present moment, but we're living according to our past imprinting and training. So like Eckhart teaches, as Eckhart told, that is the power of presence, the power of the now, right. so to speak. And ultimately, when we want to emerge beyond that, this is, this is what systems do. They allow us to kind of break old structure, old paradigm, limiting beliefs, and give us the freedom to move into why am I here? What am I to do? How can I serve? How can I find more joy and, and completeness and fulfillment in my life, which is ultimately peace and love? That's mm -hmm. why we use systems like the Mayan, the Mayan system. Okay. So that answers my next question, because I was going to ask if it helps one to find out their purpose or mission in life. Well, I, let me, I'd like to lean into that for a moment, because I, I think there's um, my sense of my own personal journey over the years and we see such a, pr a predominance of saying, you know, what is your purpose? What is your purpose? And it creates kind of a conundrum for many of us. Many of us like, I don't know what that is or I haven't never really found it. And I, I like to just offer a different context to that for a moment because mm -hmm. it, this may help some, some of the listeners kind of break through beyond this conundrum of really this search, this endless searching. And that is, is, 
in this most simplistic way, you know, purpose of life, what is purpose of life of being in this world, of experiencing family, friends, community, life, work. And ultimately, I, I sense that this purpose is for all of us is really, it's a life school. We are here to learn. We are here to heal the lives that we lived. And, we, and the purpose is simply to learn that and heal that. For all of us, it's not specific, well, I need to be a teacher or an environmentalist. So my sense is, is to, to simplify the idea of purpose into show up, what are you learning, and how is it that that can serve you going forward? Because I sense the real question for us today in particular, especially with great earth changes, a lot going on in our world, is to really say, really tap into what is my mission? Hmm. What is my mission? Because when that call and that question, I should say, is asked, it asks us to serve something greater than ourselves. And in that process, we become connected to something that's larger beyond our own simple selves and into doing our, well, doing good in the world expressing our nobility and virtuous nature. So there's a lot to be said for purpose. Mm -hmm. The real thing here is what is the mission? Yeah. What is, what is your mission? Okay. And the, so your Mayan cosmology readings would actually help someone to figure that out. Absolutely. A hundred, a hundred percent. And, and I, I, my sense is, is that's what the whole idea of any kind of divination system is, is to help kind of answer the, the, the seemingly mystery of our own life experience, the conundrum, so to speak, the, yeah. the sense that we're, well, we're, sometimes we don't feel alive. So it's about, the Mayan cosmology is about what, what brings me most alive, what's going to make my passion fly free into the world and do what I need to do in the world to be happy, to be full, to be complete, to be healthy, to be collaborative, to be a co-creator mm -hmm. with us. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you for explaining that. Um, and I hate to interrupt you, but we're going to have to take a quick break. But before we do, I want to ask you, Adam, if listeners want to call in for a reading, what can they ask you about? Well, that's a good, thank you for saying that because we, we obviously out of respect for everybody calling in and wanting a reading and the limited, limited amount of time, it's best to just focus on really, you know, really kind of a few different things. One is the, the, the future, what is what is your destiny look like? Mm -hmm. Two, what is the past? What is what is holding me back potentially in the past? Three, what is your source of your power? What is your greatest source of your power? And maybe four, what is how can that be expressed in the world? How do I uniquely express my gifts in the world? Or maybe something on your masculine or your feminine. Okay. Those areas are the best areas to touch in in the time that we have. Well, wonderful. So if you heard that, so call 1-88-298-KKNW or 425-373-5527 after this quick break. Experience, one word that can mean so much, especially when it comes to working with a realtor to buy or sell a home. The only thing better would be to have an experienced team guiding you through the process. Hi, I'm Beth Phillips York. And I'm Ray York. Together, we own the York team, part of Keller Williams Real Estate. We are here to help you with your next property transaction. I have over 14 years of experience selling local residential real estate, investment properties, and homes just like yours. I'm also known as the ghost broker. Over the years, I've managed several residual energies at the properties we've represented or sold to clients. So if you need that service, I can help you as well. For my part, I have worked many years in new construction, land development, and with builders. Combined, Beth and I make for a powerful team on your side. So put our wealth of experience to work for you. Selling a home? Get a free property evaluation and market analysis with the York Team Real Estate. Buying a home? Let the York Team Real Estate exclusively represent you and your interests. Log on to yorkteamrealestate.com. That's yorkteamrealestate.com. 
Microneedling is a revolutionary treatment that can help reduce the appearance of acne scars, fine lines, pigmentation, wrinkles, even improve the appearance of stretch marks by stimulating collagen and elastin. Sakura Skin and Mind specializes in this procedure that jumpstarts your body's natural healing process. Sakura Skin and Mind believes in not only keeping the skin up to date with the latest trends in the skincare industry, but also keeping the skin beautiful, fast, pretty, painless, and affordable. Find out more at sakuraskinandmind.com. S-A-K-U-R-A skinandmind.com. If you're planning on building a home or a major landscaping project, you'll want the team of Stone Resources on your side. Safely, effectively, and correctly working with our unique terrain requires local knowledge and environmental care. For 21 years, Stone Resources has been making sure their customers' biggest investment is on solid ground. Trust your next earth-moving project to Stone Resources. Call 425 754-6792. That's 425-754-6792. Stone Resources. We make the earth move. And remember, if you need dirt or have dirt to get rid of, you can call on us. 425-754-6792. Alternative Talk 1150. Here to uplift your day. Welcome back to Love from the Hip. I'm spiritual hypnotherapist, master esthetician, and your host, Sakura Sutter. Don't forget this show airs right here on KKNW every Wednesday at 2 to 3 p.m. Today I have the pleasure of having author, inspirational speaker, shaman, Mayan cosmologist, and founder of the Genius Process, Adam Hall. And if you would like a free but brief Mayan cosmology reading, you can call 1-88-298-KKNW or 425-373-5527. So, Adam, before the break, you were sharing with us that a Mayan cosmology reading can help someone to find their mission in life. So what happens if or do you think that everybody can align to their mission or find their mission in this lifetime? hundred percent. They can find their mission. And ultimately, the idea of stepping in, into your destiny is one uh, as a co-creative process. In other words, it's active. It's real time engagement with something that you, the impulse you feel to be of greater service in the world. And whatever that area ar arena may be, environment or education, take hold of that. Mm -hmm. Take it, step into that and the universe will cooperate to create that life of mission and purpose for you. Okay. And so almost by you sharing with them what that is, it's the knowing that starts them off. Well, I certainly will share what that could look like and what that could feel like or a, offer a perspective on that. But it's ultimately, it's up to the individual right. to be co-creator, the collaborator. Okay. All right. Well, that makes sense. Well, do you want to go ahead and take our first caller? Yeah, let's do that. All right. So, Jean from Kirkland, are you there? I am. Thanks for taking my call. Yeah, thanks for calling. So, I understand you have a question about your destiny. Yes, I'm very intrigued by this entire show, so thanks. Oh, yeah, awesome. Well, thank you. Well, um, Adam? <laughs> Absolutely. Hi, hi, Jean, and welcome to the show. It's good to, good to be here with you. And uh, happy belated birthday to you. Oh, thank you very much. You, you bet. Um, well, taking a look at um, your, your divine imprint is what I'm going to call that. In other words, in the Mayan cosmology, we each have a divine imprinting on the day of our birth. And one of the things that you're specifically asking about is what is calling us? What is our future look like? What is our destiny look like? And I want to just preface this by saying it's not predetermined. And of course, any kind of divination is not about making predictions in your life. So I, I think it's important for our callers to know this, Sakura, because it's really about how is it that we as individuals can co-create our destiny. Mm. So, so with that said, Jean, I, I, would, uh, I, would, I would speak into your destiny in the context of that you have tremendous fertility. You have the, uh, uh, there's an ability that is innately, part of your divine imprint that can seed ideas and that can nurture things to into their fruition. In other words, in other words, you can nurture them into their greater unfolding and manifestation in the world. 
So my, I have a quick question for you. Is there something that you've wanted to do or you've always gravitated to over the years since you were maybe even a, a child or a kid or something that really is called you that you feel that you could be of greater service to in the world? Is there something in particular? Yes, I really like being a life coach, and I think when I was little, I was reflecting on this today in my morning pages, I was a little too bossy as a kid, giving people my opinion on their personal business, uh, yet I do feel it was driven, as you say now, from this sort of calling to be of service, to, um, you know, find people, help people find their own moving forward, uh, maybe nurturing it, as you say. That's the, it, it, wonderful because ultimately you become the seed point of where others can take root in their own life to kind of grow and live a life of more fulfillment. So you become a seeding and intersection as a coach to do that. And a couple things that would support you in doing that, I'm just going to share this with you as we, we circle back here. And that is, is one is, Think about anything that's kind of holding you back or keeping you kind of caught in, in, the, in your own life story. And to, in a way to do that is really tap into, because I, I sense that you have an intuitive nature that's connected to kind of old wisdom, ancient wisdom. Maybe those wisdom keepers that aren't even on the planet. You probably have some intuitive ability to utilize that wisdom to help free you from anything that's keeping you from stepping into your destiny. Does that make sense? It absolutely does. Yeah, I have strong intuition, and I'm fascinated by this ancient wisdom, which is what you're talking about. <laughs> so I, I didn't think of it, though, until you just mentioned it, about using that wisdom to free myself fully. There you go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thanks for calling in, Jean. Great. Thanks so much. Take care. So, so yeah, so touching on what Jean was saying, so for one, you had her go back to visit her, revisit her childhood, right? And mm -hmm. so do you really do believe that we can discover our path there, that it's kind of like shows itself to us as a child. It, it, let me just say it this way. It's highly probable that the source of our limiting beliefs in this lifetime occurred during those most formidable years. I, I know it's true for me, but as a matter of fact, 60% of, of, of all of us have some form of childhood trauma mm -hmm. and to some degree or another. And sometimes that can re result in PTSDs. Sometimes that results in, you know, could be very, very, very challenging. But ultimately to return to the source of the imprinting that no longer serves you is, is the greater imperative. And one way to do that is to become a, 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 move into your journey to help and support others that want to do the same mm -hmm. because together, it's together we can help heal our, each other's lives and really kind of free ourselves from what was into what is emergent in, into our mission in our destiny, so to speak. Okay. That makes sense. And then there's also this, I know he had touched on, it's your co-creating your destiny, um, but there's this level of responsibility then that you have to take on as Jean, Jean um, had her aha moment at the end. Well, it's, it's about radical responsibility. I mean, most, most, most often we want to think, well, in general, I would say, not to over, overly stereotype, but most often we want to play the victim card. We right. want to... They were, we're subject to an outer condition. And anytime we say, if I only had this or so-and-so did this, or it's, you know, the economy's like this, or my mother's like that, or my daughter, anytime we're in that place, we are playing the victim card. Mm -hmm. So that's when it brings up exactly what you're talking about, Sakura, is it's time to step beyond the limiting belief of something on the outside impacting and guiding our lives and take on the radical responsibility because it's an inside job. Right. And, and when we embrace this truth of, of, of our own power by taking radical responsibility, you know, it's, it, we, we, we really can radically change our lives and our life experience because ultimately we know this. 
Mm -hmm. This really comes directly from A Course of Miracles, which is, is another part of my study and, and practice, daily practice. And that is, is that the outside picture is a reflection of an inward condition. So it's a, right. all fingers, all, all arrows point, point right in. into yourself. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh, no. All right. Well, we're going to have to take another quick break. But remember, if you want to have a Mind Cosmology reading and you want to ask about your past, future, present, masculine, feminine energy, source of power, or personal power, then feel free to call 1-888-298-KKNW or 425-373-5527 after this quick break. On this weekly skinny, I would like to talk about acanthosis nigricans, or AN. This is a thickening and darkening of the skin, or hyperkeratosis and hyperpigmentation of the skin, that occurs in areas like the armpits, back of neck, groin, elbows, and knees. The skin could potentially itch and have a foul odor in these areas. The likelihood of developing AN depends on factors like ethnicity, health, and genetics. AN is also more likely to, de to develop in people who have darker skin. There is also some evidence to suggest that hair removal may be culprit. The thought is that irritation from repeated shaving or plucking might stimulate excess melanocyte production, and melanocytes are responsible for causing pigment. Other conditions that contribute to the development of AN include obesity, diabetes, hormonal disorders, and medications. Carrying extra weight can make the body more resistant to the effects of insulin, and high levels of insulin can lead to an increased production of skin pigment cells. Diabetes, aside from having the symptom of obesity, is when the body doesn't use insulin properly, which can lead to AN. Hormone syndromes like PCOS or hypothyroidism can cause AN, as well as certain medications which can also disrupt insulin levels. Treatment for AN include anything to help with insulin like diet, exercise, and weight management. Doctors will often prescribe creams to lighten the skin or soften thick rough patches like bleaching creams or topical vitamin A. Antibacterial soaps and sometimes oral medications are also prescribed to help with odor and itchiness. Of course, none of these remedy the true cause of AN, but they can certainly help with the appearance as well as ease the minimal discomfort. To diagnose AN, most doctors can tell just by looking at the skin, but diagnostic tests such as blood tests and biopsies can also help. In rare cases, AN has been linked to the presence of cancer in older adults. In this case, it is called malignant AN and commonly affects people with stomach cancers. Malignant AN is similar to benign AN, but is typically more widespread with a possible presence in the mouth and around the eyes. So if you are noticing darkened patches on your skin, in your armpits, elbows, groin, and neck, to name a few, it may be worthwhile to visit your doctor and make sure you are not dealing with an underlying issue like diabetes or a hormonal disorder. AN usually clears up once the underlying disorder is under control. With obesity, however, weight loss may improve the skin's texture, but the discoloration can still remain. AN caused by a drug may go away completely when the use of medication is stopped. Until then, cosmetic treatments prove helpful with odor and skin appearance. Taking care of your skin's largest organ can be difficult, but not for Astera Skincare Mist. This topical skin spray supports your skin's own natural healing defenses. Astera Skincare Mist is a light misting spray, free of parabens, alcohol, toxins, and fragrance. This all natural topical skin spray will take the woe out of your skincare worries without clogging your pores. Irritation, inflammation, redness, post procedure sensitivities, no problem. With Astera Skincare Mist, you can continue about your day without the skin dismay. Acne, rosacea, psoriasis, sunburns, rashes, and fungus? Don't let these skin concerns inconvenience you. Instead, let Astera Skincare Mist allow you to be happy in the skin you're in. Available at Sakura Skin and Mind. Learn more at AsteraCare.com. That's E S T H E R A Care.com. Don't let that herd mentality lead you off a cliff. We support thinking for yourself on Alternative Talk 1150. Welcome back to Love from the Hip. I'm spiritual hypnotherapist, master esthetician, and your host, Sakura Sutter. And feel free to email me at sakura at lovefromthehip.com with your comments, your criticisms, your questions, and well wishes. Let me know how I'm doing. Today, I have the pleasure of having author, inspirational speaker, shaman, Mayan cosmologist, and founder of the Genius Process, Adam Hall. And remember, if you would like a free but brief Mayan cosmology reading, feel free to call 1-888-298-KKNW or 425-373-5527. 
So Adam, have you always been on your mission? Well, the short answer to that is no. Um, I and maybe seemingly I thought I was uh-huh. because ultimately I spent much of my much of my well let's say professional life um, Sakura really in in an arena where I did very well I was in real estate real estate development real estate investment banking in particular okay um, and that arena I I thrived in life I really achieved many at least I thought I did I achieved many of my goals it was truly I was living the uh, the American dream, so to speak, I built the big house, uh, li- joined the country club, you know, the cars, all the great accoutrements of life, family, and all those things. I, I do have three beautiful daughters, four amazing granddaughters. It's hard wow. to believe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's, uh, but ultimately, I, I came to what I would say was the choice point, mm. which happened really at the pinnacle of my career in that arena. And it was a choice point where it, I was either going to choose to find destiny and learn from my life experience, or maybe I would die. Uh, I didn't feel good. Mm-hmm. I wasn't really a nice person. Um, someone referred to me as a millionaire jerk. Wow. And so ultimately, I recognized that it was time for, for a great change in my, in my life. And that's when I made the choice to find that mission, to embrace what the life school was teaching me, what was the purpose of this life experience that I was uh, uh, having at that time, take the radical responsibility to, to, to really, really up-level and kind of redesign my life. It wasn't as simple as I'm saying, because it's a journey. Mm-hmm. It's like everything, it's a sure. process. So, but ultimately I was very blessed because I'm very diligent and resourceful and committed and intentional to to serving uh, the world and the earth during these times of of just tremendous change. So I ultimately came to that mission Mm. and now it's now it's being fulfilled in, in beautiful ways more than I could ever, ever even imagine. Okay, and essentially you really saved your life. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I I subscribe to uh, a, a, a belief, and it is it, it's a belief that in, in, in unless we are embracing the deeper uh, mission, in, in other words, uh, really connecting deep, more deeply with our soul and its desire for its greater expression in the world, unless we're really in that place in that journey of that, it's remember it's a journey. It's not mm-hmm. a destination that if we're not doing that, then we're essentially walking around, well, the walking dead. Mm -hmm. We're in some state of disease and we're in some state of dying, literally. And ultimately it's just stepping away from that system of way of living and that perspective of life that is obviously, it's a separate existence, a narcissistic view of living in the world, embracing the totality of who you are, embracing our genius, embracing our greater potential. So I think it's as easy as what are you choosing and how do you want to live the rest of your life? Mm, Okay. So how did you end up becoming then a Mayan cosmologist or a shaman even for that matter? Well, thank you for asking that. And I, and I think that's, you know, one of the great challenges of, of today more than ever um, is the, in the internet age is the, the, the resources seemingly are unlimited mm-hmm. of, of how to create more self-awareness, how to evolve our life. Um, there's so many great teachings uh, and wisdom traditions beyond our religious institutions. I mean, many of us have been ensnared in the more religious dogmatic approach to uh, uh, getting in touch with your own spirituality, your own totality. But ultimately, there are other traditions, um, you know, be it Taoism, be it other met, met, uh, forms of divination like the I Ching or human design or the Kabbalah or the Mayan. So there's different ways to really explore this. And what I was doing is I was reading and begin to study voraciously mm-hmm. different modalities, both uh, Eastern modalities like Buddhism and Zen, as well as more Western traditional Western modalities like Gnostic Christianity, for example. 
and I and I fell deeply into a presence with the Course of Miracles. And ultimately, what I wanted in my life was to have direct, ex more direct experience. So what I what I what I did at that point in time is I began to explore indigenous cultures and the traditions of the the Hopi and the Navajo. Mm. And, and ultimately the Mayans and, and, the, and the more traditional cultures of the Incans and the dip, various different modalities and, that are found in South America. And that resonated deeply with me because those traditions are a direct interface with spirit. Mm -hmm. There's not a gatekeeper in the traditional sense of say a priest or a guru. Right. And I like that, that's just my style and it offered me an adventure and I'm an adventure. So I went on the adventure and stepped into sh shaman my shamanic world, the shamanic training, and also into the Mayan cosmology and having fun with all that. So it's been a, it's been a great journey. Wow. And ultimately each of us have our own journey. And quite a difference from real estate. <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, that's an understatement. <laughs> so how did you know that you needed to be of service to others? Well, it's that's a, that's another good question because ultimately, at, at 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 a point in time when I was emerging in my process, in the process, some call this a, well, some could say it's a midlife crisis. Some would say it's a a dark night of the soul, mm -hmm. and I believe that all of us go through this kind of process that calls us to be, come forth like the butterfly, to, to, to met, metamorphose our life, to die away to that which no longer serves us, and to step into what we are becoming, mm -hmm. into our greater potentiality. And I recognized um, as I was moving through this evolutionary journey, that the more I became conscious of the journey and participated as a conscious participant in my own destiny, and as I participated more in owning my stuff and letting go of what no longer served me, the more I participated, the more I recognized the greater, the greatest joy came from with me was connecting and helping others. Hmm. And, 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 and that initially, and it continues to work with the land and to help land in, in terms of its, to conserve land. Okay. And to bring a new optics and paradigm to to real estate and to, as input to create impact in the world, and that's now evolved even a bit more into creating impact in people's lives, mm -hmm. to helping to create impact in culture. Because we, all of us, you and I, each of us, our listeners, we are the creators of this new culture, right. and it's us to show up like Gene is being called to show up to become a C point to help others guide their life into mission and purpose. So I finally came to that along the way to realize, well, there must be something bigger than myself. And that's what I'm going to follow because it feels good. It's right. And the universe was working with me. Yeah, it was easy. <laughs> yeah, okay. exactly. Okay. Exactly. Well, wonderful. Thanks for sharing that. Well, unfortunately, we're going to have to take a quick break, so everyone stick around for more Love from the Hip. Experience. One word that can mean so much, especially when it comes to working with a realtor to buy or sell a home. The only thing better would be to have an experienced team guiding you through the process. Hi, I'm Beth Phillips York. And I'm Ray York. Together, we own the York team, part of Keller Williams Real Estate. We are here to help you with your next property transaction. I have over 14 years of experience selling local residential real estate, investment properties, and homes just like yours. I'm also known as the ghost broker. Over the years, I've managed several residual energies at the properties we've represented or sold to clients. So if you need that service, I can help you as well. For my part, I have worked many years in new construction, land development, and with builders. Combined, Beth and I make for a powerful team on your side. So put our wealth of experience to work for you. Selling a home? Get a free property evaluation and market analysis with the York Team Real Estate. Buying a home? Let the York Team Real Estate exclusively represent you and your interests. Log on to YorkTeamRealEstate.com. That's YorkTeamRealEstate.com.
Hypnotherapy helps you discover and explore deep, sustainable life changes. Let Sakura guide your communication with your unconscious mind. Rid yourself of negative behaviors, fears, pains, and emotions. Weight loss, smoking, childhood drama, chronic pain, and much more can be addressed. Begin healing now. Just $100 for the first session. Learn more at sakuraskinandmind.com. S-A-K-U-R-A skinandmind.com. Dot com. Bring out the healthy way of thinking you didn't know you had. If you're planning on building a home or a major landscaping project, you'll want the team of Stone Resources on your side. Safely, effectively, and correctly working with our unique terrain requires local knowledge and environmental care. For 21 years, Stone Resources has been making sure their customers' biggest investment is on solid ground. Trust your next earth moving project to Stone Resources. Call 425 754 6792. That's 425 754 6792. Stone Resources. We make the earth move. And remember, if you need dirt or have dirt to get rid of, you can call on us. 425 754 6792. Alternative Talk, 1150 on AM, 98.9 HD3 on HD, 1150kknw.com on the web. Welcome back to Love from the Hip. I'm spiritual hypnotherapist, master esthetician, and your host, Sakura Sutter. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Facebook and subscribe to my YouTube channel and my podcast on Podcast One, Love from the Hip, and that's HYP. Today I have the pleasure of having author, inspirational speaker, shaman, Mayan cosmologist, and founder of the Genius Process, Adam Hall. So, Adam, what were the gifts that came forward, and how are you helping others in your mission today? Well, well, th- well thank you for that. And, and the, the beauty of this journey, and I think the journey that seemingly we, are so, we have so much fear about, and uh, certainly I had my own trepidation around that, but maybe you feel that you have trepidation about really stepping into your power and stepping into your destiny and what's calling you. And so along the way, I discovered you know, uh, uh, gifts and, and, and really developed out of that journey, a very specific process, a process that's designed to remove obstacles of what's preventing you from stepping into that power and that truth and that destiny. And ultimately, what do you do with it? In other words, do you, the idea is to design a blueprint to guide you forward so that you can actually execute in the world. So I want to just give you a quick little overview of my genius process because it's all about finding the source of the problem. It's an inside job. Two, it's about identifying that conflict. In other words, freeing yourself from thoughts and feelings of shame and guilt and fear. Three, it's about creating a new vision. What does that blueprint look like? It's about finding that self-love and that deep inner peace. This is a clear, succinct five-step process that gets you there I'm sharing that with people to help them bridge the old world, their old 1.0 self into their 2.0 self, their destiny. Okay. Well, that's awesome. Well, hey, Adam, we have a caller. Let me take Alexa from Seattle. Yes, hello. Hi, Alexa. Um, Hi. What, what is your question about? <laughs> yeah, well, my question is just really general. It sounded like you were doing some lion reading. Yes. Um, And I would have, I don't know if it's possible to read this, but I'm trying to figure out why I keep getting this reoccurring bronchitis. Bronchitis. Adam, is that something you can help her with? Well, it doesn't matter. I mean, what can they normally read with, read about? Well, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I've been trying to find some work and it's taking me like eons of time. And I'm qualified for jobs and stuff, and I just don't know what to do. And I also just want to do something that's not going to require too much physical labor because I'm just my body just can't do some of it. All right. Well, it sounds like just very briefly, I'm going to just mention to you. It sounds like there perhaps may be something that's stuck within your own expression, which is in your chest. That could be something that's uh, is 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 holding you back in terms of your gifts and talents, because no doubt you have wisdom and gifts and talents at this point in time of your, of, of your life. So I would, I would take a look at and just mention to you, interestingly, 
as well as there was something that was kind of seeded in your past. Was seeded, we spoke about seeded in the future with Gene. Now we're looking at, incidentally, something from the past that's a living belief. So the idea here, just in the interest of our time, Alexa, is I would encourage you to, to meditate and be really reflective on something that may have occurred during your, your early childhood or youth that's keeping you from fully expressing yourself and, 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 and putting yourself forward to really find the right kind of work for yourself. Oh, okay. All right. Does yeah, that make I sense? Yeah, do that. Great. Yeah, do, totally. Yeah, I great. can do that. Great. Well, thanks for calling, Alexa. All right, Adam. So real briefly, I was wondering if you could tell us about your book. Well, there's, there's, uh, I do have a, a book that was published uh, uh, some time ago called The Earth Keeper, Undeveloping the Future. And it shares, it's, it's a memoir of shirts that shares that journey, that, that, that journey from 1-0 to 2-0, crossing that bridge. And I, then I have a new, actually two new books coming out, but they will not be out in 2019. They'll be out in 2020. And that there, one's called The D- Divine Design. And the other is called Unleashing Your Genius. Okay. And they, the, the design is really to share these wisdom, these ancient wisdom teachings that can serve us all on the journey to step into, well, our greater truth and our destiny, as we've been talking about. Okay. And what do you see as the biggest challenge facing humanity? Oh, that's a good one. And um, I, I think clearly people have identified um, climate as our primary challenge. And climate is is truly the elephant in our living room, uh, no doubt about it. I, I don't want to underestimate that. But the but in, from a shamanic perspective, from a Mayan perspective, we we live in Aini. We live in relationship to Earth. And if we're not living in relationship with Earth, then we're actually destroying Earth and destroying ourselves. Hmm. We're this is very evident with the extinctions the species die off. We're, we're going to have a very challenging time, but that's not the biggest challenge. No. That's not the biggest challenge. And here's why, because I believe the biggest challenge is for each of us to get in touch with our inner state of who we are and our life's mission. Okay. To me, that's the challenge that I call the listener for t- to journey to that place, to discover that place within you where you can be of greater service because when we're in harmony and in relationship, in that within that place of ourself, then we automatically live in relationship with others oh, and awesome. the earth. That's so that is the greatest challenge that we face. Okay. And so how can my listeners contact you to overcome that greatest challenge? Well, the best thing to do, and thank you for asking that, the best thing to do is to reach to go to my website, adamhall.solutions, adamhall.solutions. You can see my work that I'm doing there, but I'm readily available. So there's a connect, there's a form to connect with me and you can just fill out that form. It'll, it'll specify why you want to connect. And then we can have either a connection. And if I can be of support, happy to do it. If not, then maybe I have a recommendation of something that could support you in really unlocking and unleashing the genius within you. All right. Well, wonderful. Thanks again for being here today. Oh, my pleasure. And thank you, Eric, the man behind the curtain, and you, the listener. And you can find me at lovefromthehip.com or sakuraskinandmind.com. You can also follow me on Instagram or on Facebook and subscribe to my YouTube channel as well as my podcast on Podcast One, Love From The Hip, and that's H-Y-P. And if you really love the show and are interested in advertising your business on it, or if you have any questions or comments, feel free to email me at sakura at lovefromthehip.com. Tune in next Wednesday at 2 p.m. for another Love From The Hip and make self-love contagious. Go ahead, I dare ya.